the last glacial maximum was the last period in the Earth's climate history during the last glacial period when ice sheets were at their greatest extension. Growth of the ice sheets reached their maximum positions 26,500 years ago. Deglaciation commenced in the Northern Hemisphere approximately 19,000 years ago, and in Antarctica approximately 14,500 years ago which is consistent with evidence that this was the primary source for an abrupt rise in the sea level 14,500 years ago. At this time, vast ice sheets covered much of North America, Northern Europe and Asia. These ice sheets profoundly affected Earth's climate, causing drought, desertification, and a dramatic drop in sea levels. It was followed by the late glacial maximum. Glacial climate The formation of an ice sheet or ice cap requires both prolonged cold and precipitation. Hence, despite having temperatures similar to those of glaciated areas in North America and Europe, East Asia remained unglaciated except at higher elevations. This difference was because the ice sheets in Europe produced extensive anticyclones above them. These anticyclones generated air masses that were so dry on reaching Siberia and Manchuria that precipitation sufficient for the formation of glaciers could never occur. The relative warmth of the Pacific Ocean due to the shutting down of the Oyashio Current and the presence of large east-west mountain ranges were secondary factors preventing continental glaciation in Asia. All over the world, climates at the last glacial maximum were cooler and almost everywhere drier. In extreme cases, such as South Australia and the Sahel, rainfall could be diminished by up to 90% from present, with flora diminished to almost the same degree as in glaciated areas of Europe and North America. Even in less affected regions, rainforest cover was greatly diminished, especially in West Africa where a few refugia were surrounded by tropical grasslands. The Amazon rainforest was split into two large blocks by extensive savanna, and the tropical rainforests of Southeast Asia probably were similarly affected, with deciduous forests expanding in their place except on the east and west extremities of the Sunderland Shelf. Only in Central America and the Tricocubed region of Colombia did tropical rainforests remain substantially intact a euro probably due to the extraordinarily heavy rainfall of these regions. Most of the world's deserts expanded. Exceptions were in what is now the western United States, where changes in the jet stream brought heavy rain to areas that are now desert and large pluvial lakes formed, the best known being Lake Bonneville in Utah. This also occurred in Afghanistan and Iran, where a major lake formed in the Dashti Kavir. In Australia, shifting sand dunes covered half the continent, whilst the Kakko and Pampas in South America became similarly dry. Present-day subtropical regions also lost most of their forest cover, notably in eastern Australia, the Atlantic Forest of Brazil, and southern China, where open woodland became dominant due to drier conditions. In northern China a Euro unglaciated despite its cold climate a Euro a mixture of grassland and tundra prevailed, and even here, the northern limit of tree growth was at least 20 a degree farther south than today. In the period before the last glacial maximum, Many areas that became completely barren desert were wetter than they are today, notably in southern Australia, where Aboriginal occupation is believed to coincide with a wet period between 40,000 and 60,000 years before present. World Impact During the last glacial maximum, much of the world was cold, dry, and inhospitable, with frequent storms and a dust-laden atmosphere. The dustiness of the LGM atmosphere is a prominent feature in ice cores. Dust levels were as much as 20 to 25 times greater than at present. This was probably due to a number of factors, reduced vegetation, stronger global winds, and less precipitation to clear dust from the atmosphere. The massive sheets of ice locked away water, lowering the sea level, exposing continental shelves, joining land masses together, and creating extensive coastal plains. Equals Europe equals Northern Europe was largely covered by ice, the southern boundary of the ice sheets passing through Germany and Poland. This ice extended northward to cover Svalbard and France Joseph land and northeastward to occupy the Barents Sea, the Kara Sea and Nevea Zemlia, ending at the Tamy Peninsula. Permafrost covered Europe south of the ice sheet down to present-day Sijd in southern Hungary. 
ice covered the whole of Iceland and almost all of the British Isles but southern England. Britain was no more than a peninsula of Europe, its north capped in ice, and its south a polar desert. Equals Asia equals, there were ice sheets in modern Tibet as well as in Baltistan and Ladakh. In Southeast Asia, many smaller mountain glaciers formed, and permafrost covered Asia as far south as Beijing. Because of lowered sea levels, many of today's islands were joined to the continents, the Indonesian islands as far east as Borneo and Bali were connected to the Asian continent in a landmass called Sunderland. Palan was also part of Sunderland, while the rest of the Philippine Islands formed one large island separated from the continent only by the Sabuta Passage and the Mindoro Strait. Equals Africa and the Middle East equals, in Africa and the Middle East, many smaller mountain glaciers formed, and the Sahara, Gobi, and other sandy deserts were greatly expanded in extent. The Persian Gulf averages about 35 meters in depth and the seabed between Abu Dhabi and Qatar is even shallower, being mostly less than 15 meters deep. For thousands of years the Urshat provided fresh water to the Gulf, as it flowed through the Strait of Hormuz into the Gulf of Oman. Bathymetric data suggests there were two Paleo basins in the Persian Gulf. The central basin may have approached an area of 20,000 gma squared, comparable at its fullest extent to lakes such as Lake Malawi in Africa. Between 12,000 and 9,000 years ago much of the Gulf floor would have remained exposed, only being flooded by the sea after 8,000 years ago. Equals Australasia equals, Australia, New Guinea, and Tasmania were one land mass called Sahaland. Between the East Asian mass of Sunderland and Sahaland, Wallacea remained islands, though the number and width of water gaps between the two continents were considerably smaller. Equals North America equals. In North America, the ice covered essentially all of Canada and extended roughly to the Missouri and Ohio rivers, and eastward to Manhattan. In addition to the large Cordilleran ice sheet in Canada and Montana, Alpine glaciers advanced and ice caps covered much of the Rocky Mountains further south. Latitudinal gradients were so sharp that permafrost did not reach far south of the ice sheets except at high elevations. LGM glaciers forced early human populations who had originally migrated from northeast Siberia into refugia, reshaping their genetic variation through mutation and drift. This phenomenon established the older haplogroups found among Native Americans, whereas post LGM migrations are responsible for northern North American haplogroups. On the island of Hawaii, geologists have long recognized deposits formed by glaciers on Mauna Kea during recent ice ages. The latest work indicates that deposits of three glacial episodes since 150,000 to 200,000 years ago are preserved on the volcano. Glacial moraines on the volcano formed about 70,000 years ago and from about 40,000 to 13,000 years ago. If glacial deposits were formed on Mauna Loa, they have long since been buried by younger lava flows. Equals South America equals, in the Southern Hemisphere, the Patagonian ice sheet covered the whole southern third of Chile and adjacent areas of Argentina. On the western side of the Andes the ice sheet reached sea level as far north as in the 41 degrees south of Chacao Channel. The western coast of Patagonia was largely glaciated but some authors have pointed out the possible existence of ice-free refugia for some plant species. On the eastern side of the Andes glacier lobes occupied the depressions of Seno Skyring, Seno Otway, Ina Tilbe and Beagle Channel. On the Straits of Magellan, ice reached as far as Segunda Angostura. See also Notes Further reading, Developments in Quaternary Science Series, Gillespie, Alan R. Porter, Stephen C. Atchwater, Brian F. The Quaternary Period in the United States. Elsevier ISBN 978-0-444-51471-4. Islas, Jawan Quarter or GEN. Gibbard, Philip L. Quaternary Glaciations Extent and Chronology 1. Europe. Elsevier. ISBN 978-0-444-51462-2. Islas. Jawan Quarter Gen. Gibbard, Philip L. Quaternary Glaciations, Extent and Chronology 2. North America. 
Elsevier. ISBN 978-0-444-51592-6. Eilers, Jawan Quartera GEN. Gibbard, Philip L. Quaternary Glaciations, Extent and Chronology 3. South America, Asia, Africa, Australia, Antarctica. Elsevier. ISBN 978-0-444-51593-3. Angstrom at Brava, B. Bowen, D.Q. Richmond, G.M. Ed Quaternary Glaciations in the Northern Hemisphere. Quaternary Science Reviews 5, 1 Euro 514. Bibcode, 1986 QS of V, 5, 1 Estoy. 10.1016-0277-3791, 86, 90167-8. External links, Adams, JM Global Land Environment Since the Last Interglacial. Atlas of Palaya Vegetation, Preliminary Land Ecosystem Maps of the World Since the Last Glacial Maximum. Oak Ridge National Laboratory, TN. Map and GIS database of glacial landforms and features related to the last British ice sheet. British. Department of Geology, University of Sheffield. 2004. Dyke, A.S. Moore, A. Robertson, L. De Glaciation of North America. Geological Survey of Canada Open File, 1574. With full map series. Manley, W. Kaufman, D. Alaska Paleoglacier Atlas, a geospatial compilation of Pleistocene glacier extents. INSTAAR. University of Colorado. Paleoclimate Modeling into Comparison Project PMIP website and publications, Last Glacial Maximum. Paleoclimate Modeling into Comparison Project Phase 2 PMIP2 homepage and PMIP2 publications. Osipov. Edward Y. Klistov, Oleg M. Glaciers and Meltwater Flux to Lake Baikal during the last glacial maximum.